We're so grateful that you've taken the time to worship with us today, but equally as grateful that you're participating now in Holy Communion with us. Uh, this is unusual for the first time in our history. We're doing it virtually, but there's something symbolic even about that. There's a lesson there because while we're one body, one body of Christ, there are many members of that body. And it's the sacrifice of Christ that made us one family before God. And communion reminds us of that unique thread that weaves us all together. Even though there is great distance between us as a body, we're one. While you're used to gathering in one building, uh, though we're decentralized now, we're still one body and communion reminds us of that. It reminds us of the sacrifice of Christ. On the night Jesus was betrayed, he reminded the disciples of this fact. As they looked toward his sacrifice, we look back on his sacrifice and say we'll never forget what he did to secure our salvation and our place in the family of God. But it also is a reminder of the fact, as I've already shared, that we are one body. No matter where we gather, where we're located, communion is our common union. We have drank of one spirit, and there is only one baptism into the body of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. If you don't have your elements to participate with us, this would be the perfect time to to go and grab those. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 11th chapter, beginning at the 23rd verse, For I have received from the Lord what I have delivered to you. The Lord Jesus Christ, on the night he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same manner, he took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Now, at this time, we're going to partake of the Lord's body and his blood. Let us pray together. Father, we thank you, we praise you, we glorify you for the sacrifice you made on our behalf that we would receive the grace the undeserved grace of the living God because of your sacrifice. Lord, and that you made us one through your body being broken and your blood being shed. We'll never forget it. And we'll never take one another lightly or for granted. We will not forsake the fellowship one yes, with another thank you. around this bread and this cup. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen the body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us commune together. The blood of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Let us commune together. Amen. Amen. Lord, we thank you for this time you've given us to share together. Once again, we thank you for your sacrifice. Without it, we would be hopeless. But with it, we have hope hope of being part of your family we made that a reality hope of being reunited with you forever and the hope that our sins will not be counted against us but Lord the reality is that you've declared us righteous and for that we are forever grateful that we prioritize one another we love one another as you have loved us where this is difficult, please help us. Heal relationships, heal marriages, heal families, unify communities, even as we're absent from one another. In Jesus' name we pray, 
Amen. Amen. God bless you. Good morning, Antioch. How many of you know that God is incredible? He is an awesome God. He is miraculous and he's doing great things.
your goodness is not dependent on my circumstances. You are just that good. So we wait in faith on you. Maybe you should tell somebody in your home, God is good. He's good. somewhere in your world and just you are good we thank you God for being so kind in Jesus name God we thank you for your goodness we thank you for your goodness Father thank you that we're able to trust in you thank you because we are able to see from your track record Lord that you will not ever let us down that you'll never let us go. We glorify you, we bless you, we worship you simply for who you are to us. Oh, how we bless your name. Oh, how we lift up your name. Oh, Worthy of every song we could ever sing Worthy of every praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe We live for you We live for you Jesus, the name above every other name. Yeah. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, worthy of every breath we could ever breathe. We live for you. Oh, we live for you. Say, oh. There is none beside. beside Open up my eyes, my eyes And show me, show me Lord Who you are and feel With your heart and, and In your love to those, those Oh, 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 oh Yeah song we could ever sing and worthy of every praise we could ever bring worthy of every song we could ever sing we live for you oh we live for you
firmest of foundations on a foundation that cannot be shaken on a foundation that cannot be broken regardless of circumstance regardless of situation no matter the challenge the foundation that we built this faith on this hope on this love this life of ours is Jesus the rock of our salvation and because of that we don't have to fear being shaken we don't have to fear being moved. We don't have to fear at all because the foundation that holds us up, that we stand on, that we believe on, is the rock. And God, we thank you. We glorify your name. We bless you. We honor you that you have seen fit to give us a foundation as strong as strong could be as firm as firm could be, God, and we glorify your name for you allowing us to continue walking this, for you allowing for us to continue believing on you and in you in every season. 
and knowing that we will never be let down, that we'll never be disappointed, we'll never be walked away from, we'll never be left because our foundation is Jesus Christ. We bless your name. Hallelujah. Oh, how we lift your name. Oh, how we lift your name. Yeah. It's okay to glorify him right where you are. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Bless your name, God. This is actually a wonderful time for us to give. We talked about fear and we talked about anxiety. And there's no other expression like giving that reminds our body, that reminds our behavior, that reminds our soul that God is a priority. And I know tomorrow looks shaky or uncertain. Here's what I do know, that God is still on the throne. I encourage you to be faithful in your giving. The Lord's church continues to thrive because of its people. So there's several ways you can give. We have the link below. You can give on our website at AntiochLV.com. You can give in our app. You can download it by searching in your app store for Antioch Church Long Beach. However you want to give, you can mail your check into our office, but we want to partner together to continue God's work. It's revival time. The church of God is not going anywhere. In fact, we are gaining momentum and we'll be stronger than ever. Let's continue to play a role. Let's continue to be faithful, even in uncertain times. Let's trust the Lord with our giving. So take the next few moments to find a way to give, to contribute as best as you know how, so more kingdom work can be accomplished. Father, I thank you for every gift, every seed sown. I rebuke the devourer of our finances. In uncertain times, I pray that we are like the widow of Zarephath, that every time we dig in for something, there will be something. We don't have to have it all stacked up and running over, but Lord, give us what we need. Help us to be more generous during this time as best as we can. Bless every gift, bless every seed. We thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Before the end, pursue of what you said. 
by no stretch of the imagination is this what we plan but we ask God for something very specific before we the few of us gathered together we ask that God would cause his presence to saturate the place where we gather but more specifically we've ask that God's presence would invade the place where you're viewing this. He has authority over distance. He is everywhere at once. We're asking for his manifest presence to show up right where you are and it's happened. I can't go into my normal message, but I want to give you an abbreviated version of it in keeping with where we are in this flow. Before I do that, I just want to thank you for tuning in. As difficult as it is for many of you not to be in fellowship and to be able to, to reach out and touch one another, I want you to multiply that times every single one of you who are members. For us as pastors, I was on a group chat a couple days ago with my dear friends all pastors or folks in ministry. And one of them out of the blue at about 12 midnight just put on that thread. He said, man, he said, I miss my church. I want you to know that we carry you in our hearts. And while we're strong and our resolve is to get through this and to see you through this, this there's no mystery. God has something he's been preparing for a long time. In years past where there was global crisis, it was followed in many respects if the people of God navigated it properly with revival and significant transformation. We know that's what God is up to. And so we rejoice in that. But we just, we just miss you. We miss seeing your faces. We miss standing before you, and we miss embracing you. So pray for us, pray with us. We're going to get together again soon. There's a word that I want to share with you because I've used most of my time just expressing my heart, but in Nehemiah, the eighth chapter, beginning at the 10th verse, and you know the backdrop. The Bible declares that Nehemiah was building the wall. He was repairing the breaches on the wall. And when he was almost finished, a consolidated enemy's force came upon the workers to intimidate them. They threatened them. They, they lied on them. They intentionally spread rumors. And their goal was to demoralize the builders. But Nehemiah refused to be shaken. They doubled down. They held weapons in one hand and built with the other hand. And quite honestly, in the complex times we live in now, we have to learn to celebrate God with one hand for his goodness while we keep our weapon in the other hand to fight away discouragement and the universal defeatism that has permeated many of our circles. But in the midst of this, this oppressive force coming against God's people as they were attempting to build. Nehemiah in the 8th chapter, beginning at the 10th verse, it says, he says this one-liner I love. He says, the joy of the Lord is your strength. The joy of the Lord is your strength. My prayer is that in this moment, God will not only restore your worship, your intimacy with him and with your family as you are gathered together in close quarters. But my prayer is that God would sustain or reignite your joy. I love another passage in Isaiah 55, the 12th, chapter number 55, the 12th verse. It says, you will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and the hills will burst into songs before you and all of the trees of the field will clap their hands. 
In other words, this joy he says I'm going to give you will change your circumstance as opposed to allowing your circumstance to change you. There's so many of us that feel pressurized by the conditions we're facing, the tumultuous times we live in. But notice what he says prophetically to the people. He says, not only will my joy sustain you, but it will change. Mountains represent immovable objects. They often speak of opposition in the path of the believer. But he says here, when I restore this joy, he says, you will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. He says, the mountains and the hills will burst in the song. In other words, they won't be daunting to you, but the circumstance will begin to respond to, to the joy that you carry. He said, those inanimate objects will be moved by the joy that you possess. And my prayer for you, my sustaining prayer for you, is that God would fill your heart with joy like never before. Now, there are a few things I want to share with you about the joy of the Lord. Number one, the joy of the Lord is maintained through righteousness. Romans 14, 17 says, For the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but it is righteousness, it is peace and joy in the Holy Spirit. Very interestingly, these are not simply three separate characteristics that speak of the inheritance we have as kingdom citizens. While this is part of our inheritance, these things are part of our inheritance they're also progressive in nature. He says the kingdom of God is not eating and drinking, but righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. While these are the inheritance, while this is the inheritance, rather, for the children of God, again, I'm not seeing now, but some things bear repeating. It is progressive. You don't have joy in your life without first experiencing peace. But you don't have peace in your life without first aligning yourself to God's will. It's proper alignment to the will of God. It is not only the imputed righteousness, Christ making you righteous by his sacrifice, but it's when you begin to align your life to the will of God, to the righteousness of God, that God begins to restore the peace that you once had. It is not until you have peace restored that you're able to experience God's joy in its fullness. That's why the enemy, more than anything, tries to keep you tied up, wrapped up in sinful behavioral patterns. Because it's those patterns that rob you of the joy, the sustaining joy that you need to face opposition, that you need to face difficulty, that you need to face relational strain, that you need to face crises. And in this time, like never before, God is calling his church back to alignment to his will, back to righteousness. It's the righteousness that will produce peace the peace that will give you the sustaining joy. But not only does righteousness restore your joy, your connection to God and to others maintains the joy once it's restored. Listen to what Jesus says in John 15, chapter 9 through 13. He says, as the Father has loved me, so have I loved you. Now remain in my love. If you keep my commands, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commands and remain in his love. That is alignment. That's righteous alignment. He says, I've told you all this, listen to what he says, so that you may have 
joy so that my joy rather will be in you and that your joy would be made complete my command is this love each other as righteous the joy off from its source it may remain green and look as lush as it always has temporarily say this to someone who has lost your joy in the midst of the challenge that we're now facing there is no sustained joy where there is spiritual death or atrophy we try to manufacture it through through substance through preoccupation through constant pleasure or entertainment but the reality is when there is a disconnection from your source there will be no sustained joy however when you're connected to your source as the word says you're like a tree planted by the river of living water whose leaf remains green and continues to bear fruit in season with everything dry around you there will be a sustaining joy on the inside you remain standing you remain strong because your fortitude is not based on your circumstance, but your fortitude is based on your proximity and connection to the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. What the old folks used to say, it's the peace that passes understanding, the kind of peace that does not make any sense. It's not based on my circumstance. It's not based on the situation I find myself in. But in the midst of difficulty, joy remains because I'm connected to the source. I, I hate to keep going old school, but they used to say this joy I have, the world didn't give it and the world can't take it away. It's in crisis when they're shaking. It's in crisis when there's difficulty that the things that propped us up are exposed for what they really are. I heard someone say once the best way to tell a counterfeit dollar is to put it next to the real thing. In crisis, all that was counterfeit is exposed. But the beauty about crisis is like a tree that is dry that sends forth its roots looking for water, hungry and thirsty souls are looking for only that which satisfies and the reality is it is only the living presence of God which satisfies and that's why many of you who don't come in the church on Sundays are tuning in right now that's why many of you that's what many of you are looking for it's what your soul is searching for it's what you're created for it's your purpose to be connected to the giver of life. Jesus says, if you abide in me, you'll have my joy. But he says something interesting. The last dimension of maintaining joy in difficult times is revealed in this passage. He says, not only are you to remain in me as my vine, but you're to obey my commands. As you obey my commands, you remain in me. But when he speaks of his command, he says, here it is, love each other as I've loved you. He atta attaches not only your vertical relationship to the maintenance of your, ma maintenance of your joy, but he can he connects your horizontal relationships to sustain joy in your life. And this is why many people find themselves lacking peace and, and lacking joy. While they're connected to the vine, they're connected to the Lord. They're in strife with their human relationships. You can pray to the Lord and and stay connected to the vine. But the reality is, if we're not loving one another properly, if we're disconnected on the horizontal plane from proper relationships, we lose joy. That's why many of you could leave a great church service. You can leave this live stream full of the spirit and full of joy, but find yourself 
lacking joy by the end of the night because of human strife. He says it's this human dimension of interaction that allows your joy to be maintained. There is no sustained joy where there is constant relational strife. Listen to me, some of you are locked away in your house. You can't go to work. Your kids are getting on your last nerve as you're trying to homeschool. But there's a blessing in that. For some of you, you are on your way to divorce. But now you're hunkered down in the house with the person that you were trying to escape. And the reality is God is healing your human relationship. Because you found peace in him, but there's been so much strife in your human relationship that the fullness of joy that he speaks of wasn't realized. It was incomplete. But in the midst of this pandemic, God is healing homes. He's, he's healing marriages. He's healing relationships right now. And what you're going to find is that the joy in your household is going to be restored. The joy amongst your friendships is getting ready to be restored by the hand of the living God because your joy is not full if you connect righteously to God but disconnect as it relates to your relationships here on earth. 2 John says this and we close beginning at the first chapter, the 12th verse. You can hear the longing of the writer for the people. He says, I have much to write to you, but I do not want to use paper and ink. Instead, I hope to visit you and to talk with you face to face so that our joy may be complete. So that our joy may be complete. In other words, he, he said, I have God on this side of town. And y'all have God moving in your midst where you are. But he says there's something that happens when, when we get together. He said when we get together, well, we had the joy of the Lord in our respective places. When we get together, he says, then, then our joy is complete. One of the most heartbreaking things in this season is that we're not able to see each other face to face. But we have what the writer didn't have. We get to gather together in community and, and encourage one another on in, in the faith. We get to connect at these moments and there's something about us connecting at these moments that, that takes the joy of the Lord that we have individually. And when we come together, it's a spiritual mystery, but our joy becomes complete. May the joy of the Lord fill your homes. May the joy of the Lord fill your relationships. May the joy of the Lord transport through this digital medium as we fellowship virtually. May God move us into righteousness. May God cause us through our daily worship and devotion Gather your kids around. Begin to have devotion again. Begin to seek his face again. Because as you abide in the vine, God will restore joy. But as we love one another more deeply, and we stay connected not only to the vine, but to each other through this time, of trial and challenge and uncertainty and difficulty while tomorrow's uncertain we know the God who is as familiar with our tomorrow 
as we are with our yesterday. Until then, may he cause his joy to rest on us. May he cause his joy to abide in us. Until we're able to see one another once again face to face. May he make our joy complete. Now, Lord, we thank you. We praise you for your goodness, your kindness, your tender mercy. We thank you that the joy of the Lord is our strength. No matter what it looks like, no matter how cloudy the way becomes, no matter how many challenges are before us, we declare that the joy of the Lord is our strength. We will not be changed by our circumstance, but we will change our circumstance. We will not be moved by the mountain, but the joy that is in us, we pray that it will be contagious, that it will transform the hearts and minds of all who come in contact with us. But we thank you that the mountains will bow down. We thank you that the hills will come low. We thank you that the trees will clap their hands in rejoicing as we go forth in your joy and as we go forth in your peace. We leave our affairs to you and trust you. We trust you to be the God who will sustain us, to be the God that will heal us, to be the God that will provide for us, to be the God that always goes before us to lay the path straight. Now it's in the name that is above every name. It is in the name that causes every knee to bow and every tongue to confess. It is in the name that the dead were raised in, the sick were healed in, that demons were cast out by. It's in the one, the only name of Jesus the Christ. We believe this to be done. And all those who agree with the prayer and agree with me, let me hear you shout amen right where you are. Right where you are. I feel an overwhelming victory rising up. You will not be defeated. You will not bow in the face of fear or adversity. But the joy of the Lord will be your strength. You'll laugh at the days to come. You'll rejoice in eager anticipation and expectation of all that God will do. In the name of Jesus, I speak joy. I speak peace. And I speak it that is inheritance of all who name the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Bless the name of the living God. Hallelujah. And if you're at home now and you're disconnected from a church family, a church home, we are not meeting in person, but you need to be connected. In times like this, these, you need reliable voices. You don't need to run everywhere. Whether it's here or with other men and women of God across this globe that are undaunted by the days ahead, you need to get connected somewhere. We would love to be your church family. I would love to be your pastor. I would love to be your virtual pastor until we see one another again. And if right now, you don't have a church family, a, a church home. I want you to go to Antioch, A-N-T-I-O-C-H-L-B.com, our website. We, you can get connected there. 
But more importantly, if you don't know Jesus Christ as your Lord, your Savior, and you want to know more about what that means, to put your faith in the one that has given me hope, that has given us hope, and has taken all of our sins, the penalty of our sins upon himself, that we could go free and enter into authentic relationship with God. If you want to know more about what it means to make Christ the Lord, the Savior of your life, I want you to go to our website or call us at 562-591-8778. We have prayer counselors standing by ready to lead you to the Lord. We want to continue to give you words of hope, of encouragement, of direction in the days ahead. If there's anyone without a church family, church home, or just folks you know who need what it is we're offering, make sure you invite them next week and be sure to share the link to get as many people as possible connected to this source of life. We love you. We're going to make it through this thing, and the kingdom of God will continue to advance. Now, Lord, we thank you for being the love in every believing heart, the peace in every believing mind, the breath in every believing spirit, the life in every believing soul. And we pray, may the saving grace of our Lord, our Savior, Jesus Christ, and the sweet communion of his precious Holy Spirit rest, rule, and abide now, henceforth, and forever as we're becoming more like Christ in our environments, are becoming more like heaven as we are full of the joy of the Lord and we're not allowing our fear to overcome our faith. It will matter that we lived in Jesus' name. Amen. God bless you. We love you.